All right, you're going to do a video on the attributes of a Pharisee. What are the attributes of a Pharisee? We're going to go over that from the Word of God tonight. So first of all, Pharisees put standards on people that they themselves fail to uphold to or just refuse to uphold. Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 4. Then spake Jesus to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, all, the, all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe, that they that, that observe and do, but do not ye after their works, for they say and do not, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Matthew chapter 23, verse number 23. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye pay tithe of mint and anus, anus of, com of cumin, and have omitted the weightier matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. These ought, these ought ye to have done, and not to leave the other undone. So they put standards on you, but they themselves are hypocrites, and they refuse to uphold those same standards. Next, Pharisees try to stop and hinder the spreading of salvation and the spreading of the gospel. Matthew chapter 23, verses 13 to 15. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a, pe a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall, see, re ye shall receive a greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye compass the sea, compass sea and land, uh, to make one proselyte. And when he is made, you make him twofold, twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. They try to stop the spreading of the gospel. They try to hinder it. They try to fight against it. They try to slander people to try to stop it from spreading. They try to do whatever they can to stop people from entering into the kingdom of heaven, which in that you know in that time the kingdom of heaven was basically Jesus Christ presenting the earthly physical kingdom to the Jews. See Matthew chapter eleven verse twelve. But they shut up the kingdom of heaven. They try to stop that spreading of the gospel. Next, the Pharisees have a good outward appearance, but inwardly they are dirt. They are as dirty as the devil, and they're children of the devil too. See John chapter eight verses forty three to forty seven. Matthew chapter 23, verses 25 to 28. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you may clean out the outside of the cup and of the platter, but within they are full of extortion and excess. Thou blind Pharisee, cleanse first that which is within the cup and platter, and the outside of them, of them may be clean also, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but within you are full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so you, out, you also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but inwardly you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. They can look good on the outside, they can have a good outward show of holiness, but their heart is wicked. They are still inwardly children of the devil, and they are as dirty as their father the devil. Next, Pharisees will pridefully lie about not being like their brethren who committed sins. Meanwhile, they themselves are every bit as wicked and then some. Believe me. Matthew chapter 23, verses 29, 29 to 35. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because ye build the tombs of the prophets and garnish the sepulchres of the righteous. And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye, ye be whiteness unto yourselves, then that ye are children of them, ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, I send unto you prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them... Uh, shall you scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city that upon that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of the righteous of righteous evil unto the blood of Zacharias the son of Barcanias whom ye slew between the temple and the altar exactly they're prideful they'll say oh I'm not like so and so but then they do the exact same thing and worse Luke chapter uh, 18 verses 9 to 14 contains a good example of that. 
Next, the Pharisees will twist the words of the saints and entangle them and try to make them try to get them in any kind of slip up or any kind of mistake, just like they tried to do the, due to, to basically Jesus Christ. They do the same thing to Jesus Christ. Those do the same thing to the saints, modern day Pharisees. They look for any little slip up you make and try to twist your words and try to, oh, look, look what he said right there. The Pharisees do. Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us therefore what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tri uh, tribute unto Caesar or not? And But Jesus perceived their wickedness, and said, Why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? Show me, show me the tribute money, and they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Whose is the image and subscription? They sent unto him Caesar's, and he then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are, which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. And when they heard these words, they marveled, and left him, and went their way. They are trying to entangle him in his words. They're trying to catch him in a, in a slip up and try to see, Ooh, look what he said right there. See, he slipped up. He made a mistake. Look what he said. That's what Pharisees do. And they do the same thing to the saints as well. They will do the same thing. Read John chapter 15. Jesus says, you know, they hated me, they're going to hate you. It's that simple. Next, the Pharisees demand signs and wonders because they refuse to walk by faith. Matthew chapter 12, verses 38 to 40. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would, see a, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said unto them, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So the Pharisees come to him and saying, Hey, give us a sign. Come on, give us a sign. They don't want to just walk by faith. A lot of the charismatics out there and Pentecostals, they're modern day Pharisees. Matthew chapter 16, verses 1 to 4. The Pharisees also with the Sadducees came and tempting, um, and tempting desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. But he answered and said unto them, when, it, when, it, when is it evening? Ye say, it, when is it evening? Ye say, it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather t today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, how can ye discern the face of the sky? But ye cannot discern the signs of the times. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And he, an he left them and departed that simple and again i'm not good at reading on a computer it does you know it hurts my eyes a little bit but i find it's the easiest way to read given the setup i have in my room but you see they want a sign they want give us a sign they're tempting him but then they rebukes him for that we read about that in matthew 12 verses 38 to 40 next the pharisees exalt their man-made traditions above the commands of god matthew chapter 15 verses 1 to 9 Then came to Jesus scribes, scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying, Why do thy disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor thy father and mother, and he that curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whomsoever shall say to his father or his mother, it is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, and honor not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus ye have made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. Ye hypocrites, well did Elias prophesy of you, saying, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. But in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Isaiah chapter 29 verses 13 to 14. Wherefore the Lord say, for Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear towards me is taught by the precept of men. 
Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder, for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. They put their their man-made traditions, like the Charismatics do, like the Campbellites do, like the Calvinists do, like the Catholics do, like the uh, Talmudic Jews do, they put their man-made traditions above the commandments of God. That's what a Pharisee does. Next, the Pharisees again look for any little slip-up a saint may, might make and try to blow it out of proportion just as they, they try to do with Jesus Christ. Psalms 35 verses 19 through 21. Let not them that are that mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Let them neither let them wink with the eye that hate me, with the eye that hate me, without a cause. Uh, for they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they open their mouth wide against me, and said, Aha, aha, our eye hath seen it. Luke chapter eleven verses fifty three to fifty four. And, and as he said these things unto them, the scribes and the Pharisees began to urge him vehemently, and to provoke him to speak of many things, lying in wait for him, and seeking to catch something out of his mouth, that they might accuse him, looking for any little slip up and be like, aha, aha, our eye hath seen it. That's what Pharisees do. They look for any little slip up you make and try to blow it out of proportion. Next, Pharisees are self-righteous, and want to justify themselves in the sight of men. Luke chapter 16, verses 14 to 15. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all, heard all those things, and they, de they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. See, they're all prideful. They say, look at me. Uh, look how good I am. Look how holy I am. But you know, the Bible says to judge not according to your appearance, but judge righteous judgment in John 7, 24. See, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7 says, God looks at the heart. Man looks on the outward appearance, but God looks at your heart. That which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination to God, like we read in that chapter there, that verse. Finally, the Pharisees are prideful, puffed up, high-minded, self-righteous, and like to boast about their self-righteousness. Luke chapter 18, verses 9 to 14. Then he spake, then he, th and spake he this parable unto a certain which trusted in themselves that they are righteous and despised others. And two men went up into a temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee, that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as is publican. I fast twice in the week, I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as, so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you that this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, but he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. See, the Pharisee boasts about himself. You know, I thank thee that I'm not as other sinners are. I thank thee that I'm not like this thief over here. I thank thee that I'm not like this adulterer, this fornicator, this, you know, harlot, this prostitute, this drug dealer. But, you know, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 through 11. Such were some of you, and list a bunch of sins there. Pharisees are self-righteous, prideful people who exalt their traditions above men, or exalt their man-made traditions above God, we'll say it that way, who put burdens on men that they themselves refuse to uphold or just can't uphold themselves and just don't want to admit it. They're prideful and they try to shut up the salvation, the spreading of the gospel to people that basically they don't like and try to stop the spreading of the gospel in general. You read all throughout the book of Acts, the Pharisees are trying to hinder the spreading of the gospel. And Pharisees, they are hypocritical and they are prideful, and basically they have a good outward appearance, but inwardly they're full of iniquity and they're children of the devil. That's the thing about Pharisees. That's, those are the attributes of a Pharisee. They're hypocritical, they're prideful, they have a good outward appearance, but inwardly they're full of iniquity. They're full of wickedness, they're full of hypocrisy. It's that simple. Don't be deceived by Pharisees, and when you see them, when you see somebody displaying any of these attributes, you're dealing with a Pharisee. That's simple.
So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.